Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery, and you're watching Tuesday's Tip of the Week, number 76. In today's video, I'm titling this Truth in Shot Execution, and I'm gonna go through a few things. I'm gonna go through my journey of how I got target panic, um, kind of what triggered that for me, the reasoning behind it, and some uh, older thoughts and what was going on with shot execution in the world at that point. I'm actually gonna have a few videos that I am linking down below in the description if you wanna watch them in their entirety that I'm gonna play some clips from in this so that you can see some different perspectives and we're gonna talk through that as well as just myself shooting too. So um, getting started, me with target panic. So my target panic actually started because of everyone at that time, including a very popular archer in the um, media outlets, were all saying you had to pull through a shot. You couldn't manipulate a release. You couldn't use um, a hinge release by rotating it with your fingers. You couldn't use a thumb release by depressing the trigger with your thumb and working and moving through it. You had to just pull through the shot. And for me, that created a lot of issues and anxiety and it eventually led to target panic because I struggled with having a shot fire with one, with not a, you know having an effect on my shot execution and my float. So just meaning as I started to pull through, I would notice my float would do some erratic things and it became a stop and start and kind of created some problems with me there. And then it also was just sometimes I was hanging up and the shot wasn't firing at all and sometimes it was and that created probably the biggest problem for me that even to this day that is um, something I'm always monitoring is making sure that what I'm doing allows my brain to know the shot will fire at some point just meaning that I'm not going to hang up it's not going to be a problem the method that I'm using is going to work and then that calms me down a ton I can go into it and I can actually start shooting and and just know that I need to work my shot execution method and while I'm holding on target. So we're gonna kind of pull all this together today and talk about Joel Turner, his method, um, kind of what that looks like. I'm gonna give you some visuals on that and uh, uh, I'm gonna say dumb it down um, because the way that he will describe it in different videos and um, when he talks about it, um, it's, it's kind of complex. So some people understand it, some people don't. I'm gonna you know, dumb it down and, and kind of summarize it on a very brief form. And honestly, I'm gonna talk to you about how this is not anything new. A lot of people have brought this to my attention recently, and I know why. I, I know he was on Joe Rogan's podcast a couple months ago and um, some other stuff going on. And of course, with the new Onyx uh, clicker release, the thumb release coming out, and Bodie, Bodie Turner, his son, doing so well. So I know there's a reason why people are telling me about this, but this is nothing new. In fact, the videos that I'm gonna show you today are from eight to 10 years ago. Um, for the last decade, we've been talking about how to shoot a release in the same way that Joel Turner is, but you know the way that he is doing it and getting to the masses is awesome, and I will stand there and tell you that it is the best way to shoot a, re a release and the best way to shoot your boat accurately. But enough of me rambling. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm gonna start this off really quick with some background in the old videos that we were talking about. The first one that we're gonna watch here is Levi Morgan. He is actually talking at a Vegas conference, I believe. Um, I, I wanna say this was um, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago, something like that. Um, the video itself, when I originally watched it, I believe Bo Junkie put it out, but I went back and tried to search for it and couldn't find it. But I did find somebody that was there that had a cell phone recording on uh, YouTube. So I took that. The link for that full video is down in the description there in case you want to go and check that out. But uh, it doesn't really need me to explain it. I'm going to let you watch it. I'm going to let you listen to what he has to say from something almost a decade ago. And then right after that, I'm going to splice in an old video in the infancy of this channel of myself where I'm talking about release execution with the hinge, essentially the same thing, um, is what Levi is talking about on how I'm executing so that you can see that too. With my back tension to keep the bow up on the draw. And I don't, I do not start pulling with my, my back muscles at all. I literally use zero back tension pretty much to find my release. It's a simple rotation of the hand for me. Um, 
and I know that's crazy from what people have been taught over the years. And, and I know Larry Wise would probably pass out right now. <laughs> say that. And then, you know, after I won some tournaments as a pro and started to become really good friends with these guys, the top shooters, I started realizing nobody uses back tension. All these guys have figured out the same thing I had that there's no way to repeat that the same and do it the same every single time. What I do is I set up a hinge release to work for me based on the rotation. So starting out drawing, a lot of pressure on the index and the thumb, taking the thumb off and letting it rotate through to its, you know, while it's getting to its natural pivot point and there's that click. And then at this point, I'm just gonna add a little bit more pressure into the index or into the ring finger, and then I'm just gonna let it keep going. All right, now that you've gotten to see those two videos that were shown on this channel, and kind of get the gist and the idea of nobody at the upper levels really just pulls through their shot. Now I have one more video and this one is going to be, it's interesting to me. Hopefully it's interesting to you as well. Um, this representation of what I'm going to show you um, without saying anything negative or bad is what I want to have people look at to bring awareness to a situation. This video was done years ago um, before the Silverback came out. Uh, this was at the very beginning stages when Knock 2 it came out when John Dudley was, um, I wanna say this may be the first video that he had with the release and if it's not, it's one of the very first ones. Um, but it's him shooting and at this point, there was talk of only pulling through a shot but it wasn't as heavily spoken about at this point as it does get to be later on. Um, I know why he said that. I, I know that he is teaching to the masses and he is coming at it from a standpoint of not manipulating release to develop target panic, but at the same time, not manipulating the release for me creates my target panic, so to each his own. However, what I want you to see and what I'm pointing out in this video is I want you to look at his ring finger and his pinky finger whenever he's shooting his shot. Now when he's getting into anchor with his release and the way that he acquires the trigger, he moves his fingers around a lot and he kind of gets everything settled. But once he is getting settled on there and he starts to work his shot, you can actually see his ring and his pinky finger curl up and curl into his palm. And that is his method for activating that release. It's curling these fingers, it's bringing everything together, it's increasing that tension, it's increasing the pressure on the trigger and it's firing the shot. I'm not saying he's not pulling through with it. Uh, if you talk to a lot of top level archers, a lot of them will say they do have a pull that they incorporate into their shot to keep them from creeping, to keep them having a strong shot. But it's more of a maintaining the solidness on the back wall instead of an actual pull and expansion through the shot. In fact, if you tried to shoot that way with a lot of the modern bows that we have today with very solid back walls, you are gonna struggle and screw your float up really bad. So keep that in mind, watch his fingers on the outside of that release. And I just wanted to show this and kind of put this in as, as an example that at the top level of what you're doing when it's just looking at accuracy, this is the way that I feel is the most accurate way to shoot and most, if not all, of the top archers are doing some form of this as well. All right, now let's talk about the Joel Turner method. So essentially and i'm gonna i'm gonna do a very brief summary of this if you want to hear more of how he explains this i'm gonna link a podcast down below that was done um he talks a lot about the process it's very easy for me to understand it hopefully it will be for you as well and you can just see it and kind of learn from a lot of what's going on in that podcast and the speaking of what um, everybody is doing the host included so it's really good i'll put that down there you can check that out too but essentially what Joel Turner is teaching is what he calls open versus closed loop. And he is talking about having a closed loop shot and putting this into a perspective that most people can hopefully understand. An open loop movement is something that you're consciously thinking about and, and it, or, or I'm sorry, not consciously thinking about 
and it just is happening. So one of the examples that he gives is shooting a basketball, um, you know, or throwing a baseball, um, throwing a baseball, throwing a football, shooting a basketball. Most people can understand this. They've done this at some point. When we are doing these motions and, and what we're doing here, we are trying to make the ball into the goal. We are trying to throw a ball to a person. Uh, we are not consciously thinking I need to snap my wrist or I need to get my hand at a certain angle or I need to get forward extension to a certain degree or whatever it may be. I can get really in depth on that, especially with baseball, but um, it's just a motion. It's just happening. It's a learned repetition and manner of what we're doing. A closed loop is something that we're consciously thinking about in the moment. And for shooting archery, um, working through a trigger on any kind of trigger bow or not, it's something that we consciously have to think about actually working and moving and making it fire. Uh, same thing with the hinge release. We are consciously rotating and moving that release. So what he is talking about, what uh, Joel Turner talks about is single digit manipulation being the most accurate, repeatable way to shoot your shot. And if you're looking at this in a basic principle, we're talking about a thumb release, we're curling our thumb and adding that pressure into the release. If we're looking at a hinge release, this is a huge reason why I went in and started using a two finger release years ago. Because for me, when I'm working through my shot, I was only using my middle finger anyways, and I was using it the same as I would if I was using an index finger on a trigger, um, whether that's you know a, a caliper release or a gun trigger. But it's the same idea, it's the same concept. We're rolling into the hinge or into the click on this hinge. And if you have a thumb release like the Onyx clicker that we'll talk about later, you're depressing the thumb until you get to the click. And at that moment, what he is talking about is that is your, your signal to get in the moment and focus on your only job being executing a good shot. And that's what that closed loop system is and it's working that release in whatever form it is until the shot fires. One of the things that really stood out to me when he talks about that is he is he is recommending and talking about working through your shot in a slow controlled manner you've heard me talk about that a ton everything we're doing is slow and controlled so that it doesn't affect what we're seeing in our sight picture but one of the things he mentions is slow and controlled to where if something were to happen he could bail out and execute or not execute his shot so if you're working your thumb on there gust of wind comes it moves you around something's going on you're shooting at an animal and it you, whatever's going on, right? You can abort that and come off the trigger because you're not punching, you're not rushing, you're not doing anything quick. Same thing with the hinge. It's a slow squeeze so that you're not rushing that shot. If you needed to let down, you could. Now, what I will say and expand on this is if you're learning this, you may want to over-exaggerate it and go extremely slow to point out your form flaws. Um, you may be trying to time a shot internally and not even realize it. And you may be holding on target, working through that release, and you may have a bob or a jump or a flinch because you're used to that shot going off in a certain amount of time. And instead of forcing that to happen, you're just kind of working through it and it's slowing down. Over time, doing this will allow you to be able to get out of that rhythm and out of that anticipation and it will help you a ton. So for me, I like to go in a certain window, talked about that in our shot execution series, where I know I need that shot to fire, and if it hasn't, I let down. But I don't force it to go off during that window if I'm running towards the end of it or something's happening. I don't wanna snap and I don't wanna force anything to happen. That's when bad things to, you know, start to go on. So um, in the members video that we're gonna talk about today, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with this by showing you with a release on a thumb release if you have an Onyx clicker, how it's gonna work. And if you don't, the way that you can approach a thumb release or even a hinge release in the same manner to where it locks you in on the shot when you get to the point that you are gonna to start to execute your release and that's what you're focusing on. So I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth and show you that, but hopefully you have seen that um, there's truth in behind this and there's way more in depth that we can go on this. Um, but I'm glad that this style of shooting is becoming more mainstream and more accepted. 
it's what I've been doing for years and a lot of other people too. So if you haven't tried this, give it a shot. Um, it's probably going to work for you unless you've got some gremlins going on in your head and something else happening. But even in my target panic um, instructional video that I'm selling, when I'm walking through steps to find your trigger and then the two stages on adjusting and creating your shot built around to um, replace the trigger and then how to deal with things as well. I mean, it's the same thing. You're still working through your release. You're still using, I recommend to shoot at a target unless there's a severe case. I don't think blank bailing does you a heck of a lot of good in my personal opinion. Um, not in that situation because usually what I find is your trigger is the target and you blank bail just fine. You throw a target up there and it screws you up. You waste a lot of time. So uh, if you're interested in that video, I'll put a link down below so you can get a description of it and see what it's about. But yeah, guys, I, I appreciate you watching this. We've got tuning series starting next week. We've got a couple videos that'll come out on that. I got a bow set up with some new strings, had to work all that in. So it's a good time to get everything filmed and be able to bring that out and show you. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you soon.